Hello, I'm Kevin Tharp. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the very fundamentals of how we develop websites. Whether you're looking at your personal web page, Google, which is the most used web page, or any other uh, resource on the internet, all of the web pages have to work off a core set of rules and principles. And that, that's what we're going to be covering today. So what we're going to be talking about it is the basic building blocks. At least that's where we're going to start, and we're going to we're going to build up from there. And as you go through learning about web pages, you're going to need to have this base foundational theory of of what a web page is and how it's manipulated in order to create the things that you want. Because when you understand all those rules, then you are able to do literally almost anything that you can imagine with a web page. So let's start with the very fundamentals is a, a cell is the basic building block of a web page and each cell can have its own properties such as background colors, borders, font, etc. Now at the moment I'm actually showing you a spreadsheet to, to illustrate this because uh, it, it's helpful in being able to see how this is related to other things that you may be used to. So I can apply a background color I can give a cell a border. Notice the border there. I can uh, assign font colors. There's a lot of properties that you can apply to either a cell or the content of that cell. So for instance, the background color is applied to this cell. The border is applied to this cell and you'll see that black uh, border there. And in this case, the font color is a property applied to the content of that cell. So there's a lot of flexibility and and you'll have to learn about all that as you go forward. But for now we're starting with just the building blocks. So in order to uh, make this work we use HTML elements to define those cells and there are a lot of HTML, element, HTML elements that are out there. And we use a, a thing called semantic markup to define what goes into each type of cell. And so semantic markup is a way of uh, writing code so that when you create a element or a cell, what you're doing is you're also in the process defining what kind of content is going to go in there. So if I've got a div here, and, and there's the code for div right there, we use an opening tag and then we use a closing tag to define most of the cells. In some cases you only need a single tag, but we'll talk about those exceptions later on. Generally you're going to need to have both an opening tag and a closing tag. And a tag is just simply that code that you write that allows you to create the element that is the basis of the, of the cell or the content of the cell. So uh, one of the fundamental ones is a div. A div uh, defines a division or a section of the document. Another way to think about this is that it is a box. So a cell could be thought of as a box and I'll tend to use those words intermittently as I go through my different videos on this. Uh, so what we're really talking about is, is different kinds of boxes. Now the next thing that you look at is um, an H1 or heading level. So you've got different levels of importance to the content in the page and generally it's shown by different uh, font levels etc. So if we go back to some of the pictures that we we brought up earlier um, we'll go to this one. So this would be a um, an H level one. So it, it's the most important thing on the page. This particular page doesn't have any H2s, but as we come down here, you'll see that this would be an H2. So the H1 is the most important element of the page, lessons. Uh, H2 would be uh, getting into the specifics, for instance, learning modules, etc. So uh, the important thing to remember at this point is that there are different levels of headings and you're allowed to, uh, uh, um, to assign different properties to each of those. The H1 heading level 1 is the highest level heading and it indicates the most important information in the page or section. Uh, heading level 2 would be the second highest level heading, not necessarily the second heading in the page, but the second highest level. So if you were thinking of your web page as being built in an outline. You've got the, the heading level one would be the base level of the outline. The heading level two would be the first level within that heading level one. So normally you're going to have a heading level two sitting underneath a heading level one in some way. There may be multiple ones. 
Uh, the next thing is header, and if we go back to our page, our our web pages, the header is going to be normally it's going to be that element at the top of the page, uh, where or the top of the page or the section. So in this one, uh, my personal page, this image text at the top of the page and the navigation all fall into the heading. That's going to be the same usually on almost every page. Now, not that's not a rule, but it is a principle that's often experienced is that headings are going to be uh, at the top of the page and generally they're going to be used uh, in several pages as you're going through it. So the header, not heading, header is uh, at the top of a page or a section and it defines what kind of content will be in that page. So if you were looking at a newspaper, the header is that section at the very top of the page. Uh, normally it tells you the name of the newspaper, uh, those kind of things. If you go to a web like site like say CNN uh, or Fox News, uh, that's going to be that very top section at the top of the page. Footer is that section, that information that shows up down at the bottom of the page. Uh, often it's used to hold copyrights, disclaimers, that kind of stuff. So this section down here is the footer. So we've got the header at the top, the footer at the bottom, and you can have those either for the page or for a specific section of the page. And if you recall, we used a div to define a division or section within the document. Then you can have things, and there are a lot more that we're not going to go into today, such as paragraphs. And a paragraph is basically a text. Sometimes images are included. But basically, it is a text section of the page where you are putting the, the content in the form of text into the page. Another thing that's important to realize is that cells can contain other cells, and this process is called nesting.